My name's Angelica Cameron. I'm an entomologist and I work for a small company based in Victoria called IPM Technologies. We work with farmers and with their advisors all around Australia and overseas, helping them to implement integrated pest management using biological controls, cultural controls, and then using spray options only when we really need to as a last resort. Neville Mock is my name. Um, I live here at Red Hill. Born and bred here for my whole life. My father came here in 1960 and we're currently running about 50 acres of apples, including cherries, a few, few pears and a few avocados. We've changed to biodynamic practices in 1974 and have been working on that process since then. We're really lucky to see here a working example of a fantastic integrated pest management program on this farm. So whether we were standing in an apple orchard or in any other perennial tree crop or vine crop environment, there are a couple of key predatory species that would be the same across any of those crops. Some of them are things like lacewings that fly in and feed on caterpillars, they'll feed on mealybugs, they'll feed on scale insects, they'll feed on a very wide range of pests and they come through in springtime and, and we'll easily find them on every tree in this sort of environment. Hoverflies are also important. The larval stage of hoverflies are predatory and they feed particularly on things like aphids, but once again, if aphids aren't in abundant supply, they'll feed on whatever they can find. We also have predatory bugs, so sucking insects that literally suck the guts out of their prey and typically they'd be going after things like caterpillar pests. In this orchard we've found lots of spined predatory shield bugs. This is the, the army out there that's working in an orchard environment like this to protect our crops. So in addition to predatory insects we also have wasps and flies that parasitise pests. These little creatures are very exciting. In an apple orchard some of the key parasites would be things like Aphelinus marley that parasitises woolly apple aphid and the little wasps that parasitise key pests like mealybugs. Both of these pests are difficult to control with sprays. So the parasites lay their eggs inside the host and then the little maggot develops on the inside and then once the maggot has made its own little cocoon inside the body of the host, then you get an adult wasp emerging through a little hole in the body. When you stand in an orchard like this where everything is ticking over so nicely, it's easy to forget the sorts of problems that other growers trying to produce this same crop might be facing and it's typical on apple farms to be regularly uh, spraying for pests like woolly apple aphid, things like scale insects or mealybugs. They're very difficult to control with sprays but that's the, the general approach. In this orchard we simply don't have a problem with pest mites, we don't have a problem with mealybugs, we don't have a problem with woolly apple aphid. Codling moth is very well under control so all of these key pests are simply manageable in an environment that supports the predators and parasites that feed on them and that isn't conducive to building up large populations. The whole picture of this orchard here with a diversity of plants that provide pollen an alternative food source for predators of pest mites, minimising dust, minimising extremes in temperature and humidity through having this, this ground cover and the cover crops under the trees, all of those different elements come together to mean that predatory mites are favoured in this environment and the pest mites are not favoured. And then on top of that, the fact that in this orchard they're not spraying broad spectrum pesticides that kill the predatory mites simply means that we've got a, an ideal balance here. We want to steer away from a monoculture. So basically we, we run crops in our tree rhyme and that can be just ongoing through the course of the year. And that will also allow us just to access the orchard for harvest and pruning because we're, we're in the orchard the whole time of the year so we, we've got to have access and we want to be able to run crops in the understory. Benefit of that is that obviously we'll do a green manure crop for nutrition and then we'll also try and manage our understory as a, as a, as a hygiene method as well. So you might be horrified to find a whole lot of aphids on some of the weeds down in the understory here but it's actually a fantastic sign because these aphids for example on the thistles don't transfer onto the apple trees 
they are going to stay on the thistles and these are a great food source for predators like ladybirds and lacewings and hoverflies. So you can see how there's a whole ecosystem down here that's just supporting all of the beneficial insects that we need up in the tree as well. My attitude to weeds is it's not a weed unless you've got a single variety, you know, that's if you've got a, a diverse bunch of things that are weeds and are a bit messy, well, you can use them to your advantage. You know, if it's too wet, they will you know, help dry your soil. Plough them in as a cheap green manure crop, but we have good tools now that you can manage weeds. Just depends back to your expectation, whether you're uh, running a golf course or whether you're running a living farm. I think the key thing is the expectation. You're not gonna solve a problem in one season. You know, you've, it, it's a, it's a long-term year on strategy. My philosophy is that you just do everything. There's no one thing that's going to fix it. You've just got to do everything. And then that seems to get, get you through.